Hi, this is Dr. Desmond Wai with Desmond Wai Liver and Gastro Center. Today I want to talk about uh, autoimmune hepatitis or AIH. Autoimmune hepatitis, AIH is a very uncommon disease. I would say I see maybe one new case every few months, maybe a few, few new cases per year. Uh, it's a very unusual disease, so if you have it, do see an experienced liver doctor that have enough experience, they have seen enough cases to give you advice. So the word autoimmune hepatitis means it's an autoimmune problem. It means the patient's immune system attack their own liver for some unknown reason. I told my patients that AIH is something like your immune system think the liver is not yours. So, the, so your body immune system secret antibody send the white blood cell to the liver to damage your own liver. And patient can present with uh, feeling tired uh, feeling uh, uh, lethargy. Sometimes they have eye become yellow when the damage has been there for a long time. Sometimes they have they feel unwell, no appetite, bloating, uh, uh, feeling tired, lose weight, and they go and see a family doctor or other doctor, and the blood test show the liver is inflamed. Uh, my patient with autoimmune hepatitis, ninety nine percent are female. So if you are male and you are diagnosed with autoimmune hepatitis. Uh, do talk to your doctor to be sure that the diagnosis is correct. So typically, it's a young female, usually in the 20s up to the 50s, presented with uh, abnormal liver enzymes. The liver function tests have a typical pattern that they have a high globulin, low albumin, high ALT, and high AST. So I repeat, high, album, high globulin, uh, low albumin, high ALT, and high AST. In fact, this one of the rare scenario that we see that the globulin album ratio is reversed. Usually we have more album than globulin in the liver function test, but in people that have autoimmune hepatitis, they have more globulin than albumin. So high globulin than albumin. So the, the, this is a typical picture. We have to exclude other causes such as viral hepatitis, B or C, or other uh, drug induced liver injury. So autoimmune type hepatitis diagnosis, we need to first make sure that uh, it is the right uh, form. Normally a young to middle-aged female uh, with no other liver causes, has a typical uh, biochemical picture like high ALT, AST, high globulin. And we can do some confirmation tests to confirm it. Typically the anti-nuclear antibody ANA are positive. And some markers like anti-smooth muscle, anti-LKM, may be positive as well. Uh, besides that, typically their immunoglobulin G, IgG, will be markedly elevated. So typically high ALDAST, high globulin, high IgG. Then for all my patients with autoimmunitis, we always come to the same question at the end that should we do a liver biopsy? Liver biopsy carry a small risk of 1% risk of bleeding. You know when we put the needle to the liver, second of the liver tissues, Sometimes we also damage the uh, liver blood vessel and they get a bleeding. Roughly 1% risk. Uh, so we need the good thing about biopsy is that it can confirm the diagnosis, see how bad the, the disease is. It can help to exclude other causes, but the, there's a risk of bleeding. So I told my patients, if you have a very classical kind of a, a autoimmune hepatitis presentation, young female for unknown reason, feeling tired, liver function test become abnormal, uh, and the ANA positive, IgG markedly elevated, other causes excluded, then, and you respond to steroid. Maybe you don't need to have a biopsy to confirm it, but still, it is still good to have, okay? Uh, another reason why we want to do biopsy is that, you know, once you got AIH, we're going to label you with AIH, they often need long-term, long-term means years, more than months, years of medication, sometimes even lifelong. So before we commit a young female to a long-term, years to even lifelong, possibly lifelong medication, we want to be sure that we have dealing with AIH, we want to be sure that nothing else that causes the same thing. And patients with AIH respond very promptly, very dramatically to steroid. We give them prednisolon at a fixed dosage, they typically will respond very well. When I see them about a week to two weeks later, usually there's a market improvement. Um, of course, uh, it's always a difficult task as to how much do, do we do to exclude other causes. Typically, we exclude after the B and C and other diseases by blood tests. We do an MRI to make sure that there's no 
liver cancer, liver hardening, no bowel, no gallstone, no other liver injury that cause the similar problem. Uh, we also, uh, once the scan is done, we confirm it. We make sure there's no drug induced liver injury, like taking Chinese medicine, Chinese other Western medicine, taking complementary medicine, taking supplement, etc. We make a diagnosis, and they respond dramatically to steroid. But steroid is not a good. It's a wonderful drug, but it's not a drug that you want to take for a long time, because steroid can harm the rest of the body. Like they will turn a bit brown, they put on weight, they have skin, some lining cause drying, they weaken their bone, weaken their immune system. So when we take so we give steroid for patient with osteomyelitis, we want to give a high dose initially and we want to slowly wean it down. And after that, uh, we want to uh, uh, give another medicine, we call it the steroid sparing drug. Normally I use azathioprine or sometimes a mifotic. To, when we add the mifotic or azathioprine, we can help to reduce the dosage of the prednisolone. Eventually, most of my patients will be on azathioprine or mifotic monotherapy. Occasionally, we have patients that have very active disease that the moment we drop the steroid, the disease flare up. If azathioprine and mifotic are not enough as a monotherapy, we may have to add a second therapy such as uh, tacrolimus or, or, or cyclosporine. So, but most of my patients, I would say that they are well, they can be controlled with prednisolone, azathioprine, and, uh, 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 and uh, uh, tacrolimus. If they don't respond, then we can consider them for other treatment, uh, such as uh, some biologics, but I hardly have to go to that stage. So once they are on medicine, they are fine, the liver function will improve. I will review them initially, maybe every two weeks. I normally wean down the prednisolone from a high dose to zero over the next three months. Uh, make sure they don't flare up when we wean down the steroid, make sure they don't have side effects from the azathioprine and mifotic. Also, we have to look out for other associated factors. People with AIH are more prone to other autoimmune problems such as rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, or maybe uh, 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 other autoimmune problems. So we do look out for them. If they have autoimmunitis, they are also more prone to have, uh, say, osteoporosis, low vitamin D level, and the menstrual cycle for female may be affected. Classical textbooks description is that the menses don't come when they got AIH for a long time. Uh, in fact, if a female have any uh, chronic illness for a long time, they tend to stop having menses. I guess it's the body's mechanism to preserve energy when they're unwell, try not to ovulate, so they don't have menses. But nowadays, we see very few people like that because most of the are presented early. We present them early, they see doctor early, and we hardly go to that stage. Most of my patients can have the disease control, they live a normal life, they can get married, have children, uh, they don't resort to liver cirrhosis or liver cancer. There's one specific liver in, uh, autoimmunitis, we call it a very severe acute one. They present with liver failure. When they come in, they are already uh, jaundiced, they have a high bilirubin, prolonged prothrombin time, elevated INR, they have a high liver enzyme, etc. Some of them, even when we uh, treat them with high dose steroid, they still don't make it. But those will be minority. We believe for such patients, they must have had the AIH for a long time without noticing it, then one time it become very severe and it may be a bit too late to see a doctor at that time to start treatment. Thankfully, I have very few patients belong to this category. Most of the time, when we start them on treatment, they continue. One of the danger we see in AIH is that um, most of my, many of, some of my patients, I won't say many, some of my patients, when they feel well, they stop coming to see us, they stop taking the medication. Then by the time they feel unwell, the liver become, have become very severely damaged. So I told my patient, you have AIH, it's a chronic disease, you don't run away from me, if you don't like my face, that's okay. Some people prefer to see a second opinion elsewhere, go ahead. But do not stop seeing a liver doctor. Keep seeing a liver doctor for long-term follow-up. To sum up, AIH is a predominantly female disease. Patients can be very sick if they're diagnosed late, but if you're tired, just see a local doctor, uh, see a family doctor, see a polygene doctor, do a liver function test. If the liver is grossly abnormal, uh, consider seeing a liver specialist, do the appropriate test. And uh, if EIH is indeed confirmed, there are treatment available, and it's a treatable disease, and most of my patients live a normal life. Thank you for listening. This is Dr. Desmond White.